Okay, you got the little message. Well, I'm Scott. I'm from Oregon. How about Julie? Hi, everyone. I'm Julie Oxner. I am from Hastings, Nebraska. And I'll tell you a little bit more about myself uh, in just a little bit after everybody else introduces themselves. Perfect. How about Elizabeth? Did she go? Elizabeth Halley. She must be muted or something. How about Tina? I'm here. I'm from Kansas. Okay. And Ruth? I'm Ruth Dunn, and I am from uh, Northwest Missouri, Savannah, Missouri. Okay. And Linda Hanbury, where are you from? I'm from South Mississippi. All right. Linda May Poole and her guest, Julia. Yeah, we're both here from Portland, Oregon. And Bonnie? I'm here from Southern Oregon, Pama Falls. And Barbara? I'm here. I'm Barbara from Hawaii. And my friend Thelma is on, and she's from a friend from another organization joining you. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, Eleanor? I'm from Illinois. Well, welcome. Um, I've got one that there's no name there, it's, but it's got a Thomas in it. It's B T R Thomas at G C L dot net. We don't know. Okay, Linda Niseth. Amity Oregon, close to Salem. Okay, and Carrie Evans. He's right there. I had to unmute myself. Uh, my name is Carrie Teeples Evans. I am from Klamath Falls, Oregon, Medford, Portland, Seattle, Spokane, Altus, Oklahoma, now Fairbanks, Alaska. There we go. Okay. And the artist. I'm the center part of North Dakota. Okay. And I think Thelma. Is she not on? I'm with you. I'm with Baba Shadra's guests. I'm from Honolulu. Okay, good deal. Where All is right. she from? Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and there it's uh it's, it's early there. It's seven o'clock. No, seven right? o'clock in the morning. We're just starting in the morning with coffee. Okay. <laughs> and Sue. Uh, I'm from Happy Valley, Oregon, and I have to figure out how to get on my get my picture on here. Okay, down on the left-hand side, there's a little camera. You wiggle it, you'll see a little camera, and it says stop video, and it, there's probably an X on it, and if you touch it, you should come on. Okay, who did I miss? I miss Janet is just coming on. Who else did I miss? Okay, nobody else I missed? Elizabeth Halley's back on. Oh, Elizabeth, are you back on? Where's Elizabeth? I'm looking on the screen here. Can you hear me, Elizabeth? Okay. I'm going to turn the time over to Julie, and I'm going to let her introduce herself and a little bit about what, you're, what she's going to be doing. I do appreciate everybody showing up. I'm excited I'm about excited. this. Um, if you're not on, if you, especially if you got TV in the background or dogs barking or anything like that, if you mute yourself. Um, other than that, uh, we'll, we'll be absolutely fine. Please remember that we're all amateurs here, especially me. And I am recording this, and this will be on the Oregon FCE website. It'll take me a couple hours to get it taken care of, but I'll get on there. If you didn't see it or you want to show it to your friends or whatever it might be, I do uh, want to mention that I do have one coming up in uh, December, and I hope she's still going to do that out of Mississippi. And I think I've got one for January. So if you know of anybody that would like to present, uh, you can be an amateur just like the rest of us and, and we'll do it right there. So I'm actually gonna spotlight Julie and uh, go from there. So uh, Julie, the time is yours. Okay. Well, hi everybody. What an honor, what a privilege. 
that this is to be able to come to you from Nebraska. Um, I am an extension assistant in Adams County in Nebraska. And primarily what that means is um, I work with uh, the few FCE clubs that we have left here in Nebraska, but I also work the 4-H program for youth. So primarily I spend a lot of time with youth. And um, one of the things that became near and dear to me was the Quilts of Valor. And uh, I wanna get into telling you about Quilts of Valor and the Under Our Wings program and how um, we use adults along with um, youth to educate uh, them on making quilts. You know, I don't want quilts to be a dying art. And I am also very, very interested in community service and teaching our youth um, community service and how to get involved and be active in the community. So Quilts of Valor seemed like um, an appropriate thing to do. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about Quilts of Valor. Quilts of Valor is a national foundation and it was started in 2003 by Catherine Roberts. She was a quilter and her son was deployed in Iraq. If you think back to 2003, um, I, I can kind of understand how Catherine felt. She says that she felt 10 seconds away from panic as her son faced danger every day. I want you to think about the last time that you saw a movie. Maybe it was in a theater or at home on the TV or even on your device. Think about how the lighting and the music changed in the different scenes. Sometimes it was soft and relaxing. Sometimes it was loud and stimulating the scenes. They were very intense action. Well, one night in the middle of the night, Catherine Roberts, she had this, had a dream. First, her dream was as vivid as real life. She says, I saw a young man who was deployed somewhere in the world, sitting all hunched over on the side of his bed in the middle of the night. The premeditated feeling was one of utter despair. I could see his war demons clustered around dragging him down into the emotional gutter. Then, as I was viewing a movie, the scene changed. I saw him in the next scene, still deployed and sitting on the bed, but he was wearing a quilt. Someone back home was thinking of him and made him a quilt. His whole demeanor changed from one of despair to one of hope and well-being. The quilt had made had made this dramatic change. The message of my dream, Catherine says, as quilts equal healing. How cool is that? So I bear with me here just a second. I'm going to share the screen because I want to put everybody in the mood of, um, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to get my daughter. Let's see. See, I'm one of these that that is a little bit technology challenged. Okay, here we go. Can you guys all see see it changing? Yes, we do. There, there we, we go. go. Quilts of Valor volunteers make and give quilts compassionately, from their hearts, with no thought of thanks or reply. Sometimes, however, a recipient takes the time to say what receiving a Quilt of Valor means. Both my knees were shot out, my tibia was broken, 
I have um, four bullets in my upper arm, and I've got, I got shot toward the back of my head. When I look at my quilt, uh, it reminds me of a lot of things that I had done. Um, it reminds me of a lot of things that people have done. I do get a sense of pride when I, when I look at it. It was a pretty intense combat situation, again, in the Hobo Woods, and I was on the outside of a tank shooting a machine gun, and, and uh, I got hit by an RPG and instantly lost my left leg and my right hand, and uh, also got shrapnel in both eyes. The quilt sometimes, when I walk by the guest room, or uh, I'm in the guest room, it, it winks at me, and uh, I'll go over and just lay down on it, and uh, it just feels good. And, and, it's just an, an example of someone's gratitude um, for, what it, for what I've been through in the service. I can't help but see the quilt and, and, and um, you know, automatically kind of think of, of Afghanistan. You know, I, I am extremely proud of what I did overseas. I appreciate this quilt probably more than I appreciate, you know, any metal that could have pinned on my chest, you know, uh, because you know, this just, this was given to me by a civilian. Um, it was, you know, for my service. And I held back the tears uh, when I did receive it. Uh, in fact, I did shed some tears. Uh, it, it felt very good that Vietnam veterans was finally recognized uh, as a serviceman in the fight of the war we had. I consider the people that created the quilt part of my family now. I mean, they made this quilt for us, the veterans. And the way I see it is that they're, they're my sisters in arms. It was an honor. It, it was something I didn't, ex I didn't expect. And uh, matter of fact, with some of the guys that I know that went through some of the worst things than I did. I felt they deserved it. The people that deserved probably the quilts are not here anymore, <laughs> or they never came home. I think it's actually a site of comfort. You know, it's, if, if we didn't get appreciated when we came home, this is appreciation. But uh, I can't say how special it is. It's, it's, it's the only thing that's been given to me since I've been home. There was a reassuring quality to having something made for me that, uh, that touched me very deeply. I enjoy showing it to them and they're going to look at it whether they like it or not. So it, that's, where, that's where it is. Everybody can see it and I'm real proud of it first place I've never had anything like this so uh, I take a lot of pride in it and uh, I just feel bad about the other guys they didn't get one that's National service is not the household term it once was in a wartime America. But anyone can honor a combat veteran with a healing quilt of valor. If you're a quilter already, pull some fabric from your stash and get started. If you're not a quilter, find one to take you under their wings and help you honor an American touched by war. Okay, I know that you all could see me. You could see the tears rolling down my face. I've watched that a zillion times and I can't help but get emotional with it. This whole thing is an emotional project. Uh, 
I, I think that it is, it is probably one of the most heart-wrenching but good projects that we can do for our veterans. As I go through the next, the next sections, talking about Quilts of Valor and how you can get involved in Quilts of Valor. Valor, first question I'm going to ask you, and maybe you guys can put it in the chat set, uh, segment, is how many of you, now actually, I'd love to hear your voices. How many of you are quilters? Let's just stand. see how many of you do quilting. It's okay I if you're quilting. Just tell me you're not, too. I do quilting. Okay. Anybody else? I do quilting at times. I have them for two years now, though. I've done some. Uh huh. You don't have to be an advanced quilter, and you'll see that here in just a little bit with it. So next thing I am going to do is I am going to share a PowerPoint about, about it. If I can find PowerPoint. Pardon me. Okay, there it is. Okay, so can you guys, can you guys see that? No. Not yet. Not yet. So you got to click on your little share. I bottom. went up there. Mm -hmm. The little green button on the bottom. Yeah, I can't get to there. Hold on. I'm trying. Um, Okay, we're seeing we're on there now. Okay, but you all right. Okay, now I see it full screen. Okay. So quilts of Ella. Okay. Quilts of Ella. And I think this is this is really interesting, especially mm -hmm. because we're kind of kind of at a halfway middle election year. It's not about politics. You know, a lot of times, a lot of times things have been made to be about politics, but this is not about politics. It's about care and healing, and it's awarded to U.S. military veterans who have been touched by war. So in 2003, Catherine Roberts, normal lady, quilting lady, um, I believe she lived out in California. She started this with her dream of gloom. This is her son who uh, received a quilt. And there is... Uh, Catherine again with her son. Okay. So in 2005, it took a couple of years for it to be uh, turned into a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which simply means that it, it's a taxable, uh, deductible donation. We have a lot of um, organizations that participate in Quilts of Valor. Um, so 2014, Friday, May 2nd, that was the 100,000 quilt of health that was given. Well, it was uh, given at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center in Washington, D.C. by Catherine Roberts, Susan Gordon, and Mary, Mary Ann Fonz. Catherine, um, or Mary Ann Fonz is actually a, a well 
uh, famous quilter. She does all kinds of videos and puts patterns together. And she's gotten really involved uh, with this particular program. That was the list <clears throat> on talking on uh, the first video that I showed you. As of today, look at the number. There is over 324,000 quilts awarded. Isn't that, isn't that fabulous? Um, in 2011, Nebraska became, be, um, started the 4-H challenge. Adams County, which I am the assistant of, and York County, which uh, Eileen Crumbaugh uh, was the 4-H uh, educator there, we challenged 4-Hers across the state. So in 2011, Eileen and I were driving in a vehicle across Nebraska. And she, as Jerry and I have been good friends a long time, she's an avid quilter. And she looked at me and she says, Julie, what, what are you going to do for a community service project this year? And I thought about it a little bit. I had thought about it quite a bit prior to this, but I, I thought about it and I said, you know, I have been hearing a lot about Quilts of Valor. And I had a mom who asked me about Quilts of Valor, 4-H mom, and she was really interested in getting her daughter involved with Quilts of Valor. So I was seeking, seeking out information for her. And uh, as I was looking for information, kind of got me hooked, kind of touched my heart, kind of reached, you know, reached those heart springs. And I thought, you know, this is something that my Adams County 4-Hers could do. Little did I know that I was going to jump on bag bandwagon with me. So just laughingly, I looked over at her in the car and I says, well, Eileen, Adams County is going to challenge York County to see which of our two counties can make the most quilts for Quilts of Valor. Okay, that was the start of it. Absolutely the start of it. What happened from there is our state 4-H got involved. Uh, the challenge spread not only to from Adams County to York County, but every county in the state got involved. We did a two-year challenge for youth making these quilts. Um, reached out to our, our state and local quilt guilds and made them aware of the project. Uh, they helped with participating with donations and leaderships, leadership of it. Let's face it, there is no way that Eileen and I could have taught all of these youth how to sew a quilt. And then from there, then Nebraska Independent Fabric Shops got involved. They started doing promotions and donations, uh, which was absolutely amazing because these quilts, these quilts are not free to make. So with that, Quilts of Valor has some guidelines. So, and the guidelines, uh, as you can see, the quilts are uh, a normal size quilt, not a huge quilt, uh, more like a lap type, a type quilt. Uh, typically, I try to encourage everybody to be around that 60 by 80 size. Uh, one of the restrictions is to use good quality fabric, good quilting fabric. Sometimes um, quilters like to repurpose and use clothing. Uh, one of the guidelines that the National Foundation came up with is no used clothing on it because that those fabrics would wear out quite, quite fast. And then the other cool thing is that you need to have a label on the back with the first and last name or last initial. Uh, especially for the minor children, because you don't want last names out there. So one of the things that uh, the quilt label has on it is also, well, of course, who made it, who quilted it, 
um, when it was done and who it was begin who it was given to, because I do know that a lot of these quilts that have been given, uh, uh, the people who have received them in the last ten years, have passed. So um, they are a cherished item for their family, also. So. I want to share with you some of these 4-Hers that are making the quilts. Uh, this first this first picture, as you can see, the ruler and the lady helping uh, show her how, how to use a ruler. She's never she's never done that. Never ever got to do that. Um, sewing machines. A lot of times, that is the first experience these kids have with the sewing machine. This one shows one that actually has been done. Uh, down here, you can see it's not only little girls that we teach, but it's boys also. Uh, boys, actually, I always say, and um, you guys are going to laugh at this one. The boys are probably more <laughs> meticulous than the girls are. Um, you know, you tell tell the kids to measure measure twice and cut once. But the boys really understand that. And maybe it's because of some carpentry skills that they have. I I don't know. Uh, but they also are very fascinated with sewing machines. You know, in the past 20, 20 years, sewing machines have come so far. The computerized uh, era hit the sewing machines about 20 years ago, and the, they're phenomenal what they can do. Uh, the little girl on the end, you can see her, she is pinning a border on to make her quilt look, be a little bit bigger, okay? Um, then after the quilts are done, then they go to long armors, and it's now, they now call them the long army quilters. Okay, so this machine that you see here is a long arm quilting machine. And as you can see, this uh, gentleman is running the long arm quilting machine. Uh, long armers donate their time to run the quilting machines for anybody who is making a quilt of valor. Okay, the boys are pretty intrigued with that. Okay, there's a couple of boys that have presented a quilt of valor to actually the long arm person because he was he was in the service. Okay, so quilts of valor um, has had presentations at parades and at fairs. So this is this is one um, at uh, the York County Fair. And the kids walk across the stage with the quilts, showing the quilts. Uh, the Adams County Fair, and I can speak of both these fairs because I've been to these presentations. I haven't been to uh, all these different presentations, but at the Adams County Fair, we do something that is called a bed turning. And with the bed turning, we pile quilts upon top, quilts on top of quilts, like a bed for Princess and the Pea. And then we unpile the quilt, holding the quilt up with the 4 h -er, talking about each one of the quilts. So the quilt gets the limelight, but also, also the youth does that is getting it. One of the other things that I have had the opportunity to at the Adams County Fair is, and I don't know if that's true about fairs that you guys are um, involved in, but I got to be on a stage at a concert, huge, huge concert um, with Trace Atkins. And I, I presented a quilt to a World War II veteran at that particular um, instance. And if you can imagine about 20,000 people booming, excited to be at the concert, especially the young, the youth. And I started talking about the person who was receiving the quilt. I started telling his story and talking about how he was about 23 years old when he was called to service. 
and talked about the planes, the bombs flying around him, the shots, and his plane going down, and he's in, he ends up in enemy territory. And there was a hush, a complete hush with all of the youth that were listening, because it really hit home. It was their age, that, that elder man that was playing on the stage he was their age at the time that this was happening. And I truly believe that it made an impact on these youth and what veterans have gone through, what, um, why we should honor them and respect them. So at the Nebraska State Fair, quilts of valor that receive a purple ribbon at each county fair they are turned around and they get to go to the Nebraska State Fair and be judged there. Um, but any quilt of valor that is made can be donated. So we started, yeah, I may be jumping my, I may be jumping the gun just a little bit. This is the quilt of valor room. As you can see, all of these, these quilts that are in there. So then these quilts are made by youth or youth teamed up with adults. There is a special recognition each year, one quilt of valor is selected for a special gallery that, and then the um, youth gets to display the quilt in the special gallery. So here is some of the pictures of the quilts that were presented at the uh, state fair. Um, and then the cool thing about this is at the state, at the Nebraska State Fair, our youth receive special recognition. They, re they receive a certificate and they also uh, receive a t-shirt that they get to wear a state fair t-shirt that they were involved in this. Um, so in 2013, we received a letter and what's circled says, we cannot thank you enough for making and sending such beautiful quilts as part of you, the Quilts of Valor organization. I cannot imagine how much time and effort it takes to make these quilts, but they are absolutely beautiful and clearly made with lots of love. Normally, we put them on the couches in the o or USO when we receive them. It gives our USO a homey feeling, feel, and the wounded can come in and see them and choose one and a, uh, when they come in. In addition, when they have um, litter patients, which we usually do, we put the pillowcase, we put the pillowcase on their pillow and use the quilt to keep them warm. They are lying on the stretchers for the whole 10 hours and it gets so cold on the C-17. So not only are your quilts beautiful, but they are used. Okay, I think that's very, very warming. Um, I and that came from Germany. Um, this, this one came from um, Afghanistan, from the ICU unit. Dear, I cannot thank you enough for the time, energy, resources, and the love you put into making and sending the quilts for our wounded soldiers. We received your box just in time as we had recently run out. One of your quilts went out to a soldier today. He is going to Germany and then on to the States. He smiled as we told him it was his to keep. He even commented that it smells like home. It is a small comfort, comfort that reminds them of fo folks at home care and support them. So that is from Staff Sergeant Megan from the ICU unit in Afghanistan. This picture this picture made Quilts of Valor a household name in just a matter of minutes. This picture was a salute scene around the world. So uh, a wounded soldier salute from the hospital bed, Army Ranger Josh 
Hargis saluted this and it went out on uh, ABC News Story on a YouTube video. And he received that quilt shortly before he was going home. But the cool part about that is that the uh, um, news media picked it up and helped Quilts of Valor become a national name. If you notice this picture over here, well, okay. First picture was when he was going in. Second picture is of his wife who is very pregnant there. And if you look down and see his legs, see his injury. Okay, all branches of service are awarded. U.S. Coast Guard, there's a picture of U.S. Coast Guard and a Navy veteran. Uh, there's some Korea veterans. Uh, uh, our, our 4-H quilts were awarded on a Nebraska Korean vets on an honor flight where these Korean vets in 2013 got to go to Washington, D.C. and be honored at the White House. And the fun part about that is the 4-H'ers quilts went to went along with them. Uh, a Vietnam vet says, this is the first time anyone has ever thanked me for my service. When I come home from Vietnam, no one said, thank you. He lays under his quilt every night. Um, this is Val Kim, Kim of Superior. He re repeated the phrase, this is a very special morning upon receiving the Quilt of Valor. Here's a Quilt of Valor. Uh, presented at a family reunion. If you can, if you notice that the quilts of valor are presented and they are literally wrapped around the um, the veterans. So when you do when you do a quilt of valor ceremony, there is special guidelines that that we always say. We always say we honor your service. We honor you for leaving all you hold dear to service, whether in a time of crisis or a time of peace. We know that freedom is not free. We say thank you for your sacrifice. We know that your family, <laughs> friends, community, and a grateful nation appreciate what you have done. This quilt is to comfort you. Please use it. Don't put it in a box, into storage, or on a shelf. We want you to feel cared for and comforted as you cover up with it. For those who have not heard it, welcome home. I can't do these words without getting really, really emotional. Here is a 4-H'er awarding uh, a quilt to an American Legion writer. Our governor, our former governor, Dale, Dave Heineman received a quilt by a in 2014. Uh, we've had local promotion through service organizations, through churches, quilt guild tourism events, through these local promotions, we have uh, Quilts of Valor uh, program in the Nebraska 4-H program has received uh, monetary uh, donations. One of the things that we also did was we worked at uh, Dairy Queen um, serving, um, oh, uh, and picking up trays. And then Dairy Queen in turn turned around and gave us uh, some of the profits that they had that night. So at the beginning, when you when I showed you that first documentary, that was published by Iowa Public Television. It's a video, there is a video of 4-H'ers making quilts of valor. You can go to Iowa Public Television and watch that documentary. So you can see uh, one of the youth talking there. Um, my and Eileen's story is on that also. 
and then uh, the parade of the quilts. Um, now, I've talked quite a bit about youth making the quilts, but we also have a lot of adults that create the quilts. They're not quite in the limelight because it isn't so unusual for adults to create quilts. Um, what, what Nebraska 4-H's dream has been with the adults, we have lots, lots, lots and lots of quilts. I am going great guns here. Um, lots and lots of quilts that are being made and donated. Um, but teaching 4-H youth how to sew. If you notice, support is given for fabric and time. The long, the long army, they quilt the quilts of valor. So each one of those quilts uh, for a 4-H group to make or anybody to make runs about $250. Since, since we started this back in um, about 2007, we have made, Nebraska 4-H has made about a thousand of those quilts. So I want you to think about how much financial support that we have had to have. So you can become a quilt uh, member of Quilts of Valor. If you go into the um, Quilts of Valor Foundation, there's a place where you can sign up to be a member of Quilts of Valor. There is also a place that shows you there's lots of quilt shops all over the country. There are certain quilt shops that are members of Quilts of Valor. And um, a lot of times that, um, that means that they give discounts. Well, you can sew anytime. In 2016, a National Quilts of Valor Sewing Day was started. That particular sewing day was uh, in, well, actually it is still going on. It, it starts in February. It's about the first, first Saturday of February and people get together across the country and sew for Quilts of Valor. I bet you this is the first time you guys have ever heard about that. Um, Quilts of Valor, I, uh, volunteers uh, in Nebraska, we have Eileen Crumbaugh and myself. I actually am the quilts of um, quilts of valor under our wings national director, which means I try to um, get adults to work with other adults who don't know how to sew, other organizations, 4-Hers, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, anybody that you could think of that you might want to teach this art to. So just because you might not know how to sew, that doesn't mean that you can't attend one of these special sewing days. One of the things that, uh, one of these things, one of the things that you can do at that, those special sewing days is you can, um, you can cut, you can press, um, and just be there for moral support. You make sandwiches. Help these people out that are doing it. Uh, again, I am with the Nebraska Extension Office in Adams County. I am the assistant. And um, myself, along with Eileen Kremba, started Quilts of Valor. I do, I do want to talk just a little bit more. I want to tell you. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen at this point in time. Um, I wanna tell you a little bit more about what Catherine Roberts says that this is. Catherine Roberts describes a quilt of valor as a civilian equivalent of the Purple Heart Award. The quilts are awarded. They are not handed out like a magazine or a video. The quilt of, the, of valor says, thank you for your service sacrifice and valor in serving our nation. It is not a charity quilt. A quilt of valor is a blanket, is not a blanket. If you are a quilter, you know a quilt consists of three layers that are held together by its quilting stitches. We like to think of these three layers in this way. 
the top of the quilt with its many colors, shapes, and fabric represents the communities and the individuals that we are. The batting is the filler, is the center of the quilt. It is the warmth. It represents our, the hope that this quilt will bring warmth, comfort, peace, and healing to the individual who, re who receives it. The backing is the strength that supports the other layers. It represents the strength of the recipient, the support of his or her family, the communities, and our nation. Each stitch that holds the layers together represent love, gratitude, and sometimes the tears of the maker. Okay, does anybody have any questions that I can answer about Quilts of Valor? So oh, I'm mute if you're going to talk to her. Can you hear me? Barely. <clears throat> so I have sat here through this whole presentation with tears streaming down my face. <laughs> and I want to thank you. I've never heard of Quilts of Valor before. I'm very, very impressed. I am not a quilter. I do sew. I don't know if I will uh, attempt to quilt of Valor, but you did an excellent job. And thank you so much for bringing this to my attention. You're welcome. As you can see, you know, the tears streamed down my face. And the first time, the first couple of times when I did a presentation and talked to people about it, I was embarrassed that the tears were streaming down my face. I was, uh, as I told you, I was in, I, I did the one at the Adams County Fair with, um, the concert I have to leave. and the tears just streamed down my face and the kids the, the tears streamed down their face so I am no longer embarrassed when the tears run down my face I let them run I think it's maybe even a more meaningful presentation when that happens Well, I agree with her. Thank you, Julie, for all the information and your presentation. Thank you, Julie. That was beautiful. Good. Thank you. And I did hear a couple of people that got to leave, and I understand that. And Julie, I really appreciate it. I have heard of it before, but I've never seen such a great presentation on it. And uh, I really appreciate that. I just want to give an opportunity for everybody to, to, uh, I noticed, uh, artists, she went in the chat and she said, uh, I'm just going to read this to you. It says, uh, thank you. You did an awesome job. That's artist Snyder out, out of North Dakota. She's actually our past FCE national president. So anybody else got any comments or questions? Julie, this is Carrie Evans. I just wanted to say that was a beautiful, beautiful presentation and I learned a lot. Thank you. Good, good. I hope this inspires some of you to reach out to your quilt shops out there. Um, you know, become active. Like I say, you don't need to know how to, to sew, just need to have the desire, the want. Um, if you cannot, if you don't know who to contact, Scott has my information. I am more than happy to, to relay any of the messages that I possibly can. Um, just, you know, touch base with me because it is an important, it is an important thing to do. Well, thank you very much. And I do have the information and I'd be willing to share that since you've given me permission to anybody that wants any information. 
Um, I did see a Crystal Holt and it says wonderful presentation. And the pictures were amazing to see the service members with their quilt. I don't know if you're reading those as we go along here. And I think the tears are great. I, you know, I, I always say, you know, sometimes, um, and, and, and it's kind of a churchy thing, I guess, the, the church thing is that sometimes our eyes get so full. We're not crying. It's just that we get so full of emotions that they just leak out. <laughs> Our emotions just leak out. And there's nothing bad about that. My my hope for you all is you take this. I wanted to do it close to Veterans Day. And that's why I chose this particular month. So my hope for you is that as we approach Veterans Day, you you take time. Take time to thank these veterans. You know, I I'm not from a military family. But our freedom is so important. What these, what these men and women have given for us, how they've left their homes, how they've left their loved ones, just tell them thank you. Okay, I'm just typing up a thing. Do you think this project is too much for just a beginning soldiers? in 4-H? I have kids that have never sat down at a sewing machine before. And I have a very, very simple pattern. Let me hold it. Let me hold it up. Okay. Whoa. Do you see it or not? No. I see stars. And Try to hold it a little closer. Closer? Yeah, maybe. I'll tell you when we see it. I can't see it at all. Okay, let me go further back. Okay, we can see your hands. hands. Oh, oh. There, there you go. Come back a little more. Uh, we can see. <laughs> there, there we start to see it. There we see it even a little more. Uh huh. So something uh -huh. like that. The corners don't have to match. I use that one all the time with my beginning sewers. And I what I what I do is I will get a group. I will get a group of kids and um, maybe have six, eight kids and a couple sewing machines. And I will get them ready, get them pinned together. And I will have a friend that can sit and watch them sew. And they sew just a simple straight line. And, you know, if it isn't perfect. That's that's the thing. These kids aren't going to make it perfect. Uh, let it let it go while they're there. Teach them because that's how they learn, and then you can square them up accordingly. Who cares if it's a bigger border on the outer edge? I don't ever cut, cut the border or put the pieces together until they are totally totally done. So so there you go. Um, I had. We have an FCE group in Hastings, and we do something that is called uh, Be Interested. So I, I kind of took it from, so that's where the name Be Interested comes from. Uh, about two weeks ago, I had eight ladies who had absolutely never sewn. They were my age ladies, but never have sat down at a sewing machine. I took two hours with these ladies and they sewed a quilt top. They sewed that particular pattern into a quilt top. They were so excited about what they had done. All you need is somebody who actually, who knows a little bit about quilting. Don't have to know, don't have to know lots and lots about quilting, but a little bit about quilting to be the um coordinator of it you know can you show that design again i couldn't see it with your background quilt in the i know so i just okay. see your background so, quilt. so scott do you have do you have uh these ladies emails do you I have the emails? i do okay no, so I, well, I just send it out as I, I i don't have them individually but i can send it out if you send it to okay. me send it out so 
why don't I send this particular pattern to you? I'm not going to promise that it's going to be today, but uh, I will get this particular pattern sent out to you, and then everybody will have it. It's a two-page uh, two document, and very, very simple. Good. So she'll just Thank email you. it to me, and then I will forward that to, to actually to everybody that's on my list. There's about 500 on there, so maybe a lot of people get it. And there'll be people that are looking for it that may not have been able to attend today. I know that we've got a couple of study groups in Oregon that um, they'll be they'll be watching this afterwards. Uh huh. Okay. That's. I appreciate that because. Somebody told me that they were going to come and talk to me about helping her lead a first year sewing class for 4-H. That, so. that would be awesome. So in Nebraska, we have a 4-H project that is called Quilt Quest. Uh, and okay. uh, not. I, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. I said, I don't know whether we have one in uh, Missouri or not like that. Okay, so this Quilt Quest project book is available through National 4-H, and it is, it is a tremendous resource for teaching uh, quilting. Uh, there is also, if, if, you're interested in teaching uh, clothing type projects, sewing uh, type projects. Uh, there is some curriculum available that is called STEAM clothing. STEAM? And STEAM. STEAM, like what comes out of an iron. Okay, STEAM clothing. Uh-huh. And that is available through National 4-H also. But you know, guys, don't limit don't limit this to just four Hers. There is there is plenty of youth groups. There is plenty of people that would love to be part of this. As a matter of fact, I got a request the other the other day that from our fire department, and which I thought was really unique. Anyway, the fire department asked about quilts of valor that they were interested in the Quilts of Valor project, and if there was any way that they could sew a quilt of valor. So we're going to connect them with somebody that is going to be able to sew and teach them. Their evening shift wants to do this. How cool mm. is that? You know? Yeah. Grown men. Doesn't have to be 4-H'ers. Doesn't have to be you. Can be anybody. And maybe what, what will become of this is they have a new hobby. Yeah. So probably the hardest part is when you start with a group, know your sewing machines that you're going to use because the kids don't necessarily know the sewing machines. If this is the first time that they're turned loose, on these sewing machines. They're not going to even know and understand how to thread the sewing machine. So one of the things that I do is I take and I show them a bobbin, you know, the bottom, and I talk about how the thread interlocks as the sewing machine goes up and down. You can see I'm a hand talker. <laughs> So um, the thread interlocks as it goes up and down, and that's what will hold the seam together. And then after you talk about the bobbin, you show them how to thread the machine correctly. Now, a lot of these newer machines are great because they have the um, thread pattern actually printed on the machine. So the kids can... Um, go look at that times. But if you have lots of different machines, and I started this way, I, I was really, really guilty. I started out with teaching kids and they were bringing their own machines and they would have five or six different machines that didn't run. 
or were threaded wrong, I knew I knew, knew nothing about their machine and how to thread it. So I spent all the time that I had available working on the machines. So my piece of advice to you is, is to find a sewing place that will allow you to use their machines and use something that is uh, same brand so that they thread the same way. Uh, you can sell it to the sewing place by saying, you know, it's an opportunity to get youth or people involved in sewing. They can see the sewing and maybe they'll buy a machine. You know, if they if they fall in love with it, they might buy a machine. I've had I've had lots of kids that have literally fallen in love with sewing because of Quilts of Valor, you know, and probably more so with Quilts of Valor than actual sewing garments because sewing garments in when I was a youth, it was more of a necessity if you want it. If you wanted new things, you you simply sit down and sew them, or your mom sit down and sew them. Uh, not so much these days. The you know our I think our world has turned into a textile disposable world. So by saying that, what I mean is, if they're throwaway clothes, you wear them a few times, throw them away, which is sad. It's sad for our textile industry, you know. So there you go. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? I appreciate everybody being here and especially Julie, I appreciate your time and efforts in putting this together. I thought it was a wonderful presentation. Um, and and uh, Julie has told me that she might have some others so you might get to see her again uh, in 2023. So maybe we can work out something there. Our next uh, presentation is December the 7th. And I believe her name is Valerie. And I, I don't know if Linda is still on here or not. She'll correct me on that. And, I am here. Uh, and it's Colleen. Is that correct, Valerie? Valerie Living Good, yes. She okay. has five children and she knows how to, to pack her pantry with good stuff for your family okay and yeah. on a budget yeah she sent me her, her blurb and her and her uh, bio so i'll put that good. on in the next couple of days and send that invitation out and it's on filling your pantry on a budget i believe right anyway i appreciate she, that julie thank she, you so much valerie was going to be here but she had to bring scarecrows to another place so she was planning on it but she had to do that so um okay. and she it's a great program okay you'll have to show her how to um you have to show her how to watch it on going through the oregon website okay i think she's already looked at you <laughs> okay. checked out checked it out okay all right thank you scott thank you all right does anybody else have any comments or questions Thank you, Julie. It was nice meeting you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Julie. Thank you. All right. We'll let everybody go. Have a good day. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.